Hello, and welcome to this special edition cassette tape from Between the Lions and Chick-fil-A. We know that you're going to enjoy listening to these stories from the PBS award-winning series Between the Lions. On this tape, Leona has selected her favorite stories just for you. So sit back and enjoy. Hey now, hey well, here's how. Come and read between the lions. Come on. Library. I'm sitting in my favorite chair with my favorite doll, Lovey, and we're going to listen to some of my favorite stories. My first favorite story is The Three Little Pigs, and the reason it's my favorite is because my daddy always lets me read along. When we get to the part about the big bad wolf and all the huffing and the puffing, oh, that's my favorite part. And now, here's my favorite daddy reading The Three Little Pigs. Once upon a time, there were three little pigs. Each one built a house to live in. The first little pig built his house out of straw because it is fluffy and no fuss. Mm, fluffy. <laughs> the second little pig built her house out of sticks because she was in a rush. I'm in such a rush. The third little pig built his house out of bricks, because bricks would make a snug hut. Huh. Bricks are such a fuss. Why struggle so much? Come have lunch with us in the mud. I'm in no rush. Then one day, the big bad wolf knocked on the door of the straw house. <laughs> little pig, little pig, let me come in. No, no, you can't come in. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. So he huffed and he puffed and he blew the house in. The first little pig ran all the way to the second little pig's house. But as soon as the door was shut, they heard a deep voice. Little pig, little pig, let me come in. No, no, you can't come in. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Ooh, then I'll huff, then I'll puff, then I'll blow your house in. So he huffed, and he puffed, and he blew the house in. The pigs ran all the way to the third little pig's house. But as soon as the door was shut, they heard a deep voice. Little pig, little pig, let me come in. No, no, you can't come in. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Mm. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. But the big bad wolf could not blow down the house of bricks. He grew very angry. <gasps> I'm going to come through your chimney and eat you. And with that, the wolf started down the chimney. Time for <laughs> lunch. <laughs> the big bad wolf didn't know that the three little pigs had a big pot of water boiling in the fireplace. Mmm, it smells like someone's cooking a... Uh, uh, the big bad wolf ran away, and the three little pigs lived happily ever after. The end. The 
next story is one of my favorites because it's about one of my favorite things to eat, popcorn. And my favorite brother is reading it. The Popcorn Popper by Pops Papadopoulos, a popular though non-existent author. Once upon a time, there was a young girl who really loved popcorn. Mmm, do I love popcorn. One day, she was digging in her garden when suddenly a popcorn popper popped out of the ground. A popcorn popper. I wonder how it works. Luckily, the popcorn popper came with instructions. But unluckily, I do not know how to read. I know. I'll ask someone to read to me. Hey, can anyone here read to me? No, Barbara. But alas, no one in the town knew how to read either. Oh, if only someone could read to me. Then I could make popcorn. Suddenly, a woman popped up from behind a poplar tree. Are you my fairy godmother? <laughs> Even better, dear. I'm your designated reader. I read to people who don't have anyone to read to them. I'm very popular. Cool. Can you read these instructions? Positively. <clears throat> instructions. To start the popcorn popper, say, Popcorn popper, pop, pop, pop. Popcorn popper, do not stop. Suddenly, the popcorn popper started popping. Mmm, yummy. Well, that'll be all, designated reader. All right. I'm off to read a bedtime story in Ottawa. She popped back behind the popper tree and was gone. Soon, the popcorn popper popped popcorn all over the town. Before long, the population was pooped from all the popping. Hey, enough already. Stop that popper. Yeah, stop, stop the, the popper. popper. Stop, stop the popper. Stop the popper. I can't. I don't know how. Oh, if only my designated reader were here. Suddenly, the designated reader popped up out of the popcorn. You called? Oh, designated reader, could you please stop the popcorn popper? Hey, I'm a reader, not a magician. <laughs> but you can read the instructions. Positively. To stop the popcorn popper, say, poppity boppity, pop, pop, pop. Hoppity, poppity, hop, hop, hop. Stop and a loppity, lop and a doppity, pop and a boppity. Stop, pop, stop. Instantly, the popper stopped popping. The townspeople put all the popcorn in little bags and went to the movies. After that, the designated reader taught everyone in the town how to read. <laughs> they read Mary Poppins. Please turn the tape over to listen to more stories from Between the Lions. The next story is one of my very favorite fables. And it's read by my very favorite daddy. The Fox and the Crow by Aesop. One day a fox took a walk in the woods. <laughs> the fox saw a crow in a tree. The crow had a tiny but very tasty smelling piece of cheese in her beak. Mmm, that is one tiny but tasty smelling piece of cheese. The fox wanted that piece of cheese. She had to think of a way to get the crow to drop it. The fox looked up at the crow and said, Look at that beautiful bird. Oh, is she gorgeous or what? The crow puffed herself up with pride as the fox continued. I'm telling you, if that bird could sing, she would be the queen of all birds. That's right, the queen of all birds. If she could sing, that is. The crow wanted to be known as the queen of all birds. Mm -hmm. 
and so she opened her beak and let out a... <coughs> Unfortunately, she also let out the tiny piece of cheese. The poor crow watched the tiny piece of cheese drop, 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 and drop. It did not stop until it popped in the fox's mouth with a tiny kerplop. The fox swallowed and said, ah, That was deliciously cheesy and surprisingly easy. And she ran off into the woods with a skip and a hop. The crow realized that she had learned a very, 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 very big lesson. If you want to hang on to your cheese, don't sing. Oh, no. Beware of flatterers. Well, you know, people who say nice things about you as a trick, uh, just to get something from you. Oh, yeah, that too. The end. The next story is one of my favorites. It's called The Lion and the Mouse by Aesop. Once upon a time, a little brown mouse walked up a big brown hill. Let's see. I have to get some Swiss cheese, American cheese, provolone. And a big wheel of Gouda. I may be little, but I have a very big appetite. When the little mouse got to the top of the big brown hill, she found that it wasn't a big brown hill at all. It was a big brown lion. Uh-oh. Mmm, a little brown snack. The big lion grabbed the little mouse. He was just about to drop her into his mouth when the mouse said, Oh, please don't eat me. If you let me go, I'll return the favor and help you out one day. The big lion roared with laughter. <laughs> and he decided to let the little mouse go. A long time passed. Then one day, the big brown lion was walking in the jungle. Let's see. Roast beef, beef wellington, chipped beef, beef tartare. When suddenly, he was caught in a hunter's net. <laughs> Brown mouse happened by. Hey, aren't you that big brown lion who didn't eat me because I said I would help you someday? Yeah, that's me, that's me. Go find someone to free me from this net. The little mouse offered to help the big brown lion. I can free you. How can a little brown mouse like you free me from this great big net? I can do it like this. The little brown mouse scurried up the tree and chewed through the net. Then the big brown lion was free. <laughs> See, I told you I would help you someday. Yeah, I'm sure glad I didn't eat you. Likewise, I'm sure. The end. And now, a favorite story read by my favorite brother. It's an African folktale called Red Hat, Green Hat. Red Hat, Green Hat. Retold by Ed Ledbetter. Hmm. An African tale. Once, in a small village in Africa, there lived two friends. Their names were Kendi and Upindo. Kendi and Upindo were sure that they were the best, best friends that ever were. One day, Kendi and Upindo were standing in a field talking. Lovely day, is it not, O oh dearest of friends? I could never disagree with you, closest of companions. Just then, a farmer walked between them. She was wearing a hat. On one side, the hat was red. On the other side, the hat was green. Hello, Candy. Hello, Upendo. Nice hat. Oh, yes, indeed. Very nice. Thank you. That was a very attractive red hat, was it not, oh, my friend? It was a very attractive hat indeed, oh, my companion. But it was green. 
Oh, my dearest friend, I respect your opinion more than anyone's in the world. But the hat was red. <laughs> you, my trusted companion, are full of the wisdom of the ages. But the hat was green. <laughs> best of all best friends, the hat was red. Friend, who is more dear to me than rubies, which are red, the hat was green. Red. Green. Red. Green. Red. Green. The best friends weren't best friends anymore. Upindo only saw the red side of the hat. Candy had only seen the green. Each was sure he was right. Green, red, green, red! Then the farmer walked between them again. But this time she walked the other way. Red, green, red, green! Huh? Kindy and Upindo now saw that the hat was red on one side and green on the other. Kindy and Upindo thanked the farmer for showing them that when two people see something differently, they may both be right. And they were the best of friends again. The Thanks for visiting the Between the Lions Library. If you like the stories you heard and would like to hear more wonderful stories, ask your mom, your dad, your grandma, your grandpa, your auntie, your uncle, or any good reader you know to be your designated reader and read to you every day. And don't forget to watch me and the rest of my lion family every weekday on Between the Lions, the show that helps kids learn how to read. You'll find us on PBS. Check your local listings for the exact time. See you in the library! you've enjoyed listening to this collection of special Between the Lions stories. And don't forget to collect all four Between the Lions cassettes at Chick-fil-A.